CataractCoach.com, IOL exchange after YAG capsulotomy. Can you do an IOL exchange with an open posterior capsule without a vitreous loss? Here's our guest surgeon, Dr. Vipul Aurora, showing us a pre-op exam of his patient with an open posterior capsule and a patient who needs an IOL exchange. So zooming up here, you can see there it is, open posterior capsule, starting off with the paracentesis here. And the trick of the maneuver is being very careful and deliberate and delicate in the dissection of the old lens, and then to use the new IOL as a scaffolding to place the new lens under the old lens prior to removing the first. Let me show you. So careful, careful, careful opening of the capsular bag here using a blunt spatula. You can see two paracentesis incisions were made, so you can go from the left and the right. This is why it's important for you young surgeons to learn how to use both hands. So we're doing that nice and easy opening up the capsular bag, and that's the key here is taking your time, getting that capsular bag open, hopefully for 360. And that's going to help you dissect that old lens and get it up into the anterior chamber. So now two-handed technique here. I like this, kind of going around, trying to free up that uh, lens, see will it rotate at all. And once you get it freed up and it's a little bit rotating, that's good. You want to bring that lens up. And so this lens has been fibrosed in a little bit. There's some pockets that are created when the anterior and posterior capsules fuse together. So if you dial this lens like this, you're going to get it out of those pockets. Now, making the main phaco incision or the main lens exchange incision, I should say, slightly sawing it open to get the appropriate size, getting viscoelastic, visco dissect. Remember, viscoelastic is cheaper than vitreous. So disperse the viscoelastic going underneath it and get that lens up, 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 out of the way. Notice this lens, now the haptics are in your screen horizontal. So the patient's 12 to the patient's 6 o'clock position because the surgeon is sitting temporally. A lot of viscoelastic going inside the eye here. So you want to tamponade that hole in the posterior capsule. Now lifting up this lens to create a gap. And what are you gonna put in that gap? The new lens. So inserting the new IOL underneath the existing lens first. So for a moment here, you're gonna have two IOLs in the eye at the same time. I like the slow motion technique. There it is, getting that lens in nice and gently. Get the new lens into position first. Make sure it goes in the capsule bag where you want it. That looks good, and then get that gently rotated in. Now be careful when you manipulate this, if you put any pressure on that posterior capsule, you could open up the posterior capsule even more. And in that case, you may, you may want a sulcus lens. This new lens that's going in the bag is a single piece of acrylic, so that is only suitable for in the bag placement. Now to remove the existing lens, if you're a cataract coach fan, you should be doing the twist and out technique. Let's see what's gonna be done in this case. The twist and out technique, again, go to cataractcoach.com, search for it, search for keyword twist, T-W-I-S-T, and then you will see the magical technique we use, also been published in JCRS by us, to show how to explant this lens through an unenlarged 2.5 or 2. Point whatever incision. So let's see what's being done here. No scissors, okay. Dr. Rora, scissors are a good choice. I, I approve, but I do like my twist and out technique a whole lot better. So you can cut this lens, cut it down the middle, and I like how the left hand is using that chopper or hook to stabilize that lens so it doesn't fall away or away from the scissor tips. Because otherwise, as you tend to close the scissor tips, it tends to run away from you a little bit. So now let's see. And another cut. Okay, that's a lot of cutting. A lot of cutting, be careful of that corneal endothelium. I know you have viscoelastic in the eye, but still you gotta be careful. Oh good, more viscoelastic, thank you. I was just gonna wonder about that. And now the lens is gonna be rotated and then cut in the opposite way. So it looks like the lens is gonna be trisected into three pieces, and that should be make it very easy to remove. But again, I think you could have removed this lens using the twist and out technique through an unenlarged incision. So nice and easy. Here's again fixating and holding that lens, the IOL, with the chopper or hook. And then now you can cut it all the way through. And these pieces can then be removed from the eye quite easily. There you go, there's one. And I like the idea of putting the IOL back together, reassembling it outside the eye to make sure you haven't left any small slivers inside the eye. Make sure there are no missing pieces. Because if there's no missing pieces, that may end up being a bad thing in the future. 
They could be floating around inside the eye. So now to get all the pieces out, put them together, good, it's all complete. There it is, put it the Hey, thank you for showing us that. I appreciate it. A little triamcinolone going inside the eye. I'd first take out the viscoelastic before you do all that triamcinolone. And now going in with the viscoelastic removal with the IA Pro. Be gentle here, gentle. You don't want to bring up any of that vitreous that's right behind that eyewall optic because you have an open posterior capsule. So very nice, gentle technique. If there's a little viscoelastic behind the eyewall, don't worry about it. It's not that big of a deal. And also for these patients, set appropriate expectations. Some of these patients think an eye well exchange is going to give them perfect vision. It never gets perfect vision. Better, yes. There it is post-op, but it's never perfect. Thanks for sending the video in.